to help businesses prepare their offices for reopening. The Metro Hartford Alliance is doing a virtual walkthrough of our own office with Mike Goman, principal at Goman York, a commercial real estate advisory firm. Before we start our tour of the office, I want to emphasize that making the office safe should be an ongoing process, not a one-time event, to improve our health behaviors at work and to build confidence in our customers and employees that they are safe in our workspaces. Let me give a couple of tips. First, make sure everyone is following the recommendations from the CDC, state and local departments of health, and industry trade associations. Our experience is that the trade associations have issued very good guidance on reopening. It's also important to regularly check the DECD website to get the current guidelines. The state is updating their guidelines periodically. Therefore, people need to make an effort to stay up to date so they don't fall out of compliance. Second, businesses need to do as much training as necessary to make sure people understand what's expected of them under your specific processes. Walk them through each room and explain the protocol for those areas. Give them memos and post the rules for each area on the entry or the inside of that area. And let me emphasize again that this process must be ongoing. It's essential that we effectively communicate with employees and customers to build trust. Let's do the office tour. We're starting at the front entrance. The critical thing at the front entrance is to have the necessary signage in very visible locations. The signage should cover a variety of things. Most importantly, that if you are over 65 or are currently experiencing health issues, please stay safe and stay home. The signs should also list requirements for masks, social distancing, contact tracing, temperature checks, and special requirements for deliveries. Our goal here is to minimize any unnecessary or unhealthy visits. From the front entrance, we go into the lobby area where we see the same kind of signage. Note that building managers will need to arrange for periodic cleaning of surfaces such as handrails that people often touch as they pass through the space. We also see rules for using the elevator, such as maximum capacity and where passengers should stand. As you enter the office, you see more signage reminding about protocols and reminding people to use hand sanitizer on a regular basis. You will also need a logbook, and rather than put the logbook on a counter that would put people in close proximity to the receptionist, we recommend finding a place or a separate table nearby. To sign into that logbook, don't have people use a common pen. Instead, we recommend investing in a large number of cheap pens that you can locate near the logbook. Either allow people to keep their pen or direct them to leave the pen in a bin so that you can sanitize and reuse the pens later. We also do not recommend using a book, which would cause people to make contact with a common surface. Instead, provide slips of paper that people can fill out when they arrive, leave on the desk, fill out when they leave, and then deposit in a bin. You may also want to provide signage reminding people to maintain a social distance from the receptionist. In addition, you should clearly mark the waiting area and the delivery drop-off area away from the receptionist. Next, try to set aside a space to host guests so that they do not have to walk through the entire office to meet with you. If you can, use a conference room to create a space for these meetings so your employees can go to their guests and you can clean that space after its use. We want to minimize exposure to people as they move through your office. Finally, if it makes sense for your space, you should put indicators on the floor or walls to indicate the desired flow of traffic through your office. Entering a break room, this space should be set up for social distancing with plenty of sanitizer, sanitizing wipes, and surfaces that can be easily sanitized. Keep in mind that all reusable plates, glasses, coffee cups, and similar items should be replaced with single-use disposable versions. For the kitchen, we recommend that you develop and circulate a memo prior to reopening regarding how you expect this space to be used and any capacity protocols. You need to evaluate the maximum capacity that your space can handle and limit the space to that number. You'll give that memo to your employees and also post it outside the room as a reminder. If you can, in the kitchen, convert your fixtures to touchless. Replace all the reusable items with single use. Provide sanitizer and wipes, and you may need to temporarily remove, lock, or disable some of your shared equipment to limit touching common items. If you decide to keep them, you may be required to sanitize them after each use. Either way, throughout the office, all of these have to be easily cleanable and sanitizable surfaces. As we look at cubicles and desk pods, seating areas need to be spaced far enough apart to maintain social distancing. These desks are nice and clean. That's what we need now in order to allow for cleaning. The days of cluttered desks are gone because they can't be cleaned and sanitized easily. You may want to consider requiring the use of desk placemats. These are larger size placemats that people bring into their spaces with them, put everything that they're going to use on that placemat, and then dispose of it at the end of the day. Again, as we move through these areas, we want to see 
see that sanitizer and sanitizing wipes are always within easy reach as part of encouraging people to make use of them. As we enter a private office, the protocol should be similar with clean desks, sanitizer, and wipes. You should evaluate whether an office has enough space to allow guests while maintaining social distancing. Locate the chairs at safe distances or remove chairs if you can't create that distance. Some meetings that were previously held in small offices will now need to occur in a common space. In meeting rooms, this is another room like the kitchen where you need a memo to be developed, circulated, and put into your return to work packet, clearly stating the procedures for use of these common rooms. As a reminder, capacity for the room should be posted at the entrance. Also, you'll need to start including meeting protocols in your event invites that explain how to enter and exit the room. You don't want a dozen people to enter the room in a herd. We encourage signage on the tables reminding people about the use of sanitizer and social distancing. We recommend that at the start of the meeting, the chair of the meeting run through a script with a health check, reminding people to remove themselves from the office if they're not feeling well, a reminder of the protocols in place for that space, explain the layout of the room. In this example, there are some chairs along the back wall that you might explain how they are to be used. And then again, cover any exit protocols so people do not cluster when, meeting, when the meeting adjourns. For copier rooms, these were frequent places for people to gather. Again, as part of your onboarding or, or return to work package, you're going to develop and circulate a protocol to keep this space safe. You will post signage outside the room explaining capacity and protocol for cleaning shared surfaces, such as the copy machine and other tools. This could include asking people to wipe down machines before and after their use. An additional thing we're seeing that we think is a good idea is that some people are using plastic stick-on covers that you might see on credit card machines in retail stores. These allow you to put a transparent cover on the keypad for your equipment, which you then peel off and throw away after using. Bathrooms are an area of concern for many people. Post your protocols on the bathroom door and consider a method to indicate whether the capacity of the bathroom has been reached. In other words, if a bathroom is fully occupied, you want a method to allow people to know when it's full. Some companies might use an app for this. Others might use simple signs or indicators, but be aware of creating a new common surface that people will touch. Inside the bathroom, post signage on the walls or mirrors. Touchless fixtures are ideal if that can be done. Remove any shared resources such as cups, mouthwash, hairspray, or other items. And for when people leave, you want a touchless paper towel dispenser and a garbage bin on the outside of the door so that people use the paper towel to open the door and then throw it away as they leave. Now we're looking at a second conference room, and for this room, the chairs are too close to maintain proper social distancing. Chairs need to be removed or relocated to maintain six feet of social distancing. This might turn into a room to host guests or a common space for smaller meetings. On the bright side, this room has two doors, which could be designated as an entry and an exit to allow people to come and go safely. That concludes our tour of this office. In closing, I want to emphasize the importance of learning and following all the important health and safety guidelines, as well as communicating regularly with people about these guidelines and your office protocols. Thorough and candid conversations with your customers and employees will build the confidence necessary to successfully reopen your office.